Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Vivian Hernández y nos da mucha pena, pero disculpen, es, esta tarde no tenemos intérpretes que puedan interpretar en español, pero vamos a poder tomar el audio y interpretarlo y enviarlo después. Una vez más, muchas disculpas, pero no pudimos obtener un intérprete que pueda interpretar en español esta tarde. Go ahead, her, um, Peter. Hi, everyone. It's great to have you all here for our fifth Let's Work Series event. Uh, I'm learning more about the uh, competitive, competitive Integrative Employment Roadmap. This session is for folks who are 18 and over. Of course, everyone is really uh, welcome here. Uh, my name is Peter Mendoza. I'm the Community Program Specialist with the State Council on Developmental Disabilities. The State Council on Developmental Disabilities is a independent state agency charged under state and federal law to ensure that people with developmental disabilities have the service and supports they need to be able to participate in all aspects of uh, full inclusion and to be able to participate fully in their community. And of course, one of the ways that people with developmental disabilities uh, participate fully in their community is through economic opportunity, through employment. And I should mention that I'm the community program specialist for the Sacramento Regional Office. It's great to have you all here today. I'd like to invite uh, one of the interpreters. We have ASL interpreting available along with captioning. If one of the ASL interpreters could just briefly go over how folks get access uh, interpreting services. Okay, sounds good. I just uh, translated that. <clears throat> I'm, I'm wondering if you might want to give it verbally as well. Would that be okay? That's fine. To access ASL interpreting, we have two interpreters here. Under ASL interpreter, if you notice at the cor right corner of your screen, you will see three dots. And once you click that, you can pin the interpreter and see us bigger. Um, that is how you append the interpreter for any who are deaf or hard of hearing have equal access. Thank you. Thank you. And we honor our interpreters and our captioners for today and those who support us to make this event uh, accessible. So welcome. And then I'll pass it over for our presenters for the presentation. Great. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Kwame Zaponta. I am the team manager at the Cal Cap Capital Mall Branch Office with the Department of Rehabilitation. And we're very excited to have you here join us this afternoon um, to listen and hear about the resources and the programs that are available to individuals with developmental disabilities as they prepare for employment and um, look for resources to help them secure um, a job out in the community. So um, what I am going to do is share um, my PowerPoint right now. Um, hopefully this works. All right, I think it is. Um, Peter, can you give me a yes or no if, it, if you can see the PowerPoint? Yeah, it's perfect. You're great. doing great. Awesome. Thank you. All right. So this, um, the, the Let's Work series, where we are in our fifth out of the sixth employment uh, workshops, uh, Let's Work series. This is a collaboration um, between the State Council on Developmental Disabilities, the Department of Rehabilitation, 
Far Northern Regional Center and along with Alta California Regional Center. So we started this um, uh, this this Let's Work uh, workshop employment series back in January of uh, this year, and every single month we've held one workshop series where the first one in January kicked off with an introduction um, and overview of Department of Rehabilitation, our mission, along with our services that are available to help people with disabilities in preparing for and securing employment. The second month um, focused on Alta Regional um, or the regional center, I should say, uh, and the services and, um, and, and supports that they offer in order to also help people with disabilities secure employment. And um, after that, what we've focused on in the last uh, three months, what we focused on is the CIE roadmap um, that is available online, and it is an interactive roadmap um, where we focused on each month uh, an age range. Um, uh, well, and 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 spoke to the resources again. The, again, the resources that are available to individuals um, with developmental disabilities in their journey towards um, competitive, integrated employment. Um, so we've come now to the fifth month of our series where today we will be focusing on the age range of um, 18 through 21 years of age and we're really excited to share um, the the share about the uh, programs, resources, services, um, the not only with the Department of Rehab and not only just with Alta Regional but also services and resources that are available in your community. So without further ado, what I would like to do is, I'm hoping this will work. I'm clicking my um, slides here. Give me one second. Okay, here we go. Um, so without further ado, I'd like to introduce the presenters um, for this afternoon. We have Herman Kothi, the training specialist at Alta California Regional Center, uh, Sid Van Corsell, who is the special education specialist also with Alta California Regional Center, and uh, Carly Shearer, the employment specialist at Alta California Regional Center. Um, I am also one of the presenters this afternoon. Um, and then we have a guest presenter who we're really excited to have here and join us. Um, this is Tazneen Saw, the College to Career Coordinator, a counselor from Sac City College. Um, and uh, she'll be speaking specifically about her, um, the C2C program at the Los Rios Community College District. So as mentioned, um, we are going to be focusing on the roadmap for individuals ages 18 through 21. Um, there were recordings of previous uh, workshops. Um, and so if you are interested in uh, hearing about uh, programs and services for um, the younger ages, um, please, please let us know. We would be happy to send you a copy if you weren't uh, uh, of the recording. If you were not able to join us. Um, we will have our contact information at the end of the, this PowerPoint or the presentation, and you could contact any one of us to ask for a copy or a recording of that uh, presentation, the previous Let's Work uh, workshops, and we'll be happy to send that over to you. All right. Okay. So to get our um, to get our discussion or presentation started, we wanted to start off again with an overview. If you joined us at the last um, workshop, we did go over this as well, but we can't stress how important it is and how important competitive integrated employment is not only for individuals with disabilities, but for everyone, all every individual with or without a disability. So what does competitive integrated employment mean? Um, we're going to, from this moment on, we're just going to um, um, see competitive integrated employment is CIE. Um, and so CIE means it's working out in your in your community, not in a sheltered workshop, not in a setting where there's no one um, employed in 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 your workplace um, that 
does not have a disability. It's about being belonging in your community and working in your community alongside others without disabilities. CIE also means earning minimum wage, uh, uh, minimum minimum wage or above, meaning that right now it is um, $15 per hour. And so it would be at $15 per hour or above. Um, and then CIE means having a chance to promote and get paid more, getting the same benefits like, like health care and retirement savings. So it's not just about, you know, being in your community, um, earning the minimum wage or above, but it's also get, getting equal access to those benefits um, like anyone else without a disability. So why is competitive integrated employment so important? Beyond the money, beyond the benefits, I think CIE means, um, means so much more to individuals with disabilities or just anyone in general. It means that you get more money to be able to not only pay for your bills, not not have to pay, you know, live, live paycheck to paycheck, but have some have extra money to be able to, you know, spend buy things that you want. Um, you get more money um, for a vacation, you, and, um, and being able to pay for your health benefits. Um, in addition to that, it means more independence and more self confidence. Um, and then also, that it opens up new doors, uh, sorry, doors to new friendships and new job opportunities where you can meet, socialize um, with, with other individuals uh, with or without disabilities in your workplace and having that meaningful relationship with coworkers um, and with, um, with coworkers and, and with your boss. So um, what I want to show you here is the um, there's this this is a live link to the competitive integrated employment roadmap. And if we were to click on this, I just want to show you very quickly. I'm hoping that it'll t it, you guys will see the exact same thing that I'm seeing. Maybe not. Um, let me see. OK, and I'm going to share this with you and I'm going to bring it over here. All right. I'm hoping you guys could see the competitive integrated employment roadmap, just the start of it. Um, although this is an Adobe Acrobat uh, format, it is a live um, um, it is a live Adobe format, meaning that if you click on the links, it takes you to certain areas of the roadmap. If you click on CIE here, it takes you to the definition of CIE, and then you go to the next page, and it goes takes you to what the slide that I just covered. Then if you click back to the start and you click on the roadmaps, um, the link to the roadmaps, these are the different age ranges that we covered over the last um, work, several workshops. So we covered 12 to 15 age range, 16 to 17 age range, and then again, and now we're at 18 to 21. So this is what we'll cover today. And we have um, had, uh, we've recorded the presentation again from the last two um, presentations, from the last several presentations. So if you want a recording of any one of these uh, age ranges, please let us know, and then we will get that to you. So I'm going to go ahead and click back to the start of uh, the Competitive Integrated Employment Roadmap, and I'm going to click navigate back to our PowerPoint. Just wanted to show you a brief introduction of um, and show you what that live um, Competitive Integrated Employment Roadmap looks like. And so as a reminder, this is accessible online. If you were to just do a Google search, you can get access to this roadmap. All right, let me head back to my PowerPoint. Please, thank you for your patience. So um, this is one of the um, this is one of the slides in in the roadmap or pages in the roadmap. And what this is and what you're going to see, it's a different color um, in, in in a greenish color. Each of these boxes here are rectangular boxes here that you see, and they are live links. So when you click on the each of these, it will take you to the specific roadmap that is specific to this situation. So 
for the next few slides, we're going to go through this first situation um, and cover the resources and, um, and services that may be available to you. So if I were to click on this, it says click in here if you are in high school, you do not have a job or you are working, but it is not CIE. So um, I'm going to go ahead and pass it along to Sid Van Carsel, who will go over um, steps, resources, and uh, services that are available for this population. All right, here you go, Sid. Thanks, Cami. And I'm proud to say that I'm the parent of a young adult who receives CIE services and he loves having a job. Um, so we these are essentially the same slides we talked about the last couple of times, but we're going to look at them now through the lens of a student who's 18 to 21. Um, should you work toward a high school diploma or certificate of completion? Well, by then, by the time you're 18, you probably already know the answer to that. Just a reminder, the high school diploma and special education service and the certificate of completion continues it until age 22. And there are some other um, things that have to do with the regional centers in that and we can answer those outside of the, the training. Um, would you like to continue the high school education and then find a job or just find a job after high school? And this, this isn't a forever de decision but it's something that it should be discussed by the time you're 18 so that you can start making plans. What kind of job would you like? Think, what do you like to do? You like to hang out with animals? You like to work with your hands? What, what interests you? And what job skills do you already have and what skills do you need? So we're talking about what kind of skills might you have if you like to hang out with animals? Maybe you have a dog and know how to walk a dog. Um, but also we want to talk about a little further on about what are called soft skills. Excuse me. Um, and then your, your family school support job coach can help you with your IEP or individualized education plan to talk to um, address CIE. Next slide, please, Tammy. So we're going to assume that the, the, the person does have special education service and has an, an IEP document. And it's time to find CIE or if it's time to start preparing to get CIE in the future. We want to work toward getting high school diploma or certificate of completion. We talked about that. Would you like to continue or find education? We talked about that. What kind of job would you like? One of the things that's important is to understand that the IEP team is required to start what's called a individualized transition plan or ITP when you turn 16. They can do it a little earlier if they want, but it's required at 16. And so by the time you're 18, um, you should have an ITP in in progress that we're working on. Um, and for if you're looking for it for yourself or your, your young adult, look for it. Actually, it's actually part of the IEP document. It's sort of hidden in there. It comes in different areas. Um, <laughs> um, well, we can move on though. Thanks, Kemi. Okay, so we talked a little bit about different types of skills and, excuse me. <coughs> so again, we talked about what, what do you like to do? What interests you? And don't think so much about what kind of job do you want? What do you wanna be when you grow up? What do you like to do? Um, And we, we, when we talked about, say, I'm going to stick with the example of you like animals. What kinds of 
what kind of jobs are there if you like animals? Maybe there's dog walking, pet sitting, working in a shelter. What skills do you already have that you can, um, to, and what job skills do you need? I have a dog, I know how to walk him. I probably need to know more things about how to take care of a job. My voice is going out, I apologize. And what the, this goals to work on to gain CIE in the future kind of depends on, on what you want to do. We talked about sticking with the animal example. So maybe you need to know more about what kinds of jobs are out there. Educational services and other services to reach your goals. Maybe you go to school to become a veterinary technician or maybe you do supported employment at an animal shelter. Where can you get job skills and preparation and training? And we're gonna talk more about that. Lots and lots of places to do that. I'm not gonna, the, the list is quite exhaustive. Your school, your school district, other school supports, workability, transition partnership program or TPP, Department of Rehab, America's Job Center of California. Lots of support out out there for that. Next, please. And this is a, another form of the list. And these are, again, live links so that you can explore each one of them individually. Next, please, Cami. So for someone who does not have special education services, this talks a little bit about how to obtain them. And typically you would go to your, your local school district, look for the, the special education department, and they can guide you on how to request assessments to obtain special ed services. I think that's the end. Next please, Cammie. Yep, that's mine. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Sid. Um, so I'm back on and I will be speaking to different um, programs in your community that are available. The first one is that is the Workability One program. And so um, the Workability One programs were initiated back in 1982. Yes, it's been a while, but it is um, an interagency collaboration. And what that means is it's um, a partnership between the Department of Rehabilitation and the California Department of Education um, with a, to provide comprehensive pre-employment skills training, em, um, employment placement services, um, following up with students um, once they um, have been placed at a work site and giving students the opportunity to develop um, work skills through work experience. Um, so some of the services that are offered through the Workability One program um, at the high schools is to discover what job skills a student has and needs, um, learn about very important job skills in order to be successful um, at a work site once you become, uh, once you secure a job out in the community, um, up, learning how to apply for jobs, um, the different, you know, online ways of applying for jobs. I know that there's also still um, ways that you could apply for jobs uh, by a, through a physical application, um, um, creating a resume, even if it's just a resume that you're getting started with, um, developing uh, professionalism and uh, interviewing, how to interview for a job, how to show up professionally, get comfortable or get familiar with common interview questions, um, and then also trying out um, different Work jobs um, or, or jobs, um, and that would be work experiences. Um, so these, the, I know that these work experiences have um, a limited number of um, hours where the students can get paid for the work that they do in their work experience and um, get paid while they're gaining experience, which is really exciting. Um, also, the Workability Program can connect students to and help students find volunteer sites. Again, a wonderful way to gain experience and then also giving support on the job if the student needs it um, in order to, um, for, to develop their skills. 
So the next program that I would like to discuss is the uh, transition partnership programs. Um, so the transition partnership programs um, are pretty much agreements and partnerships between some LEAs and the Department of Rehabilitation. Um, we don't, uh, as much as we would have loved to, it, to create TPPs um, throughout the state of California uh, with all of the local education agencies. Uh, we, we don't have partnerships with every local education agencies. Um, and right now we have about 104 TPPs statewide. Um, but because not all districts have a TPP, it is recommended that students and their families inquire with their school districts if they do have one um, and inquire how they can get started. Um, you could also reach out to your local Department of Rehabilitation and inquire if, you know, um, if uh, what, what transition partnership programs we have um, established with, um, with, with a school district. Um, so the TPPs offer pre-employment uh, training services that we call D um, DOR student services or in short student services. And some also offer employment services such as employment preparation, job development and job coaching or short-term supports. Short-term supports was um, formerly called job coaching services, and that's something that, that uh, um, most people are more familiar with. But even if you're not familiar with uh, the term job coaching, um, what that is, is it is a support that is provided to uh, the individual either at the job site to help them uh, stabilize on the job, um, get familiar with the job, or um, just navigate, eat, learn, help them get comfortable on the job so that way they can meet their essential job functions. Um, let's see here. So in the first uh, employment or let's work workshop, um, we went over the, uh, the DOR student services. Um, so it, it, as a recap, the DOR student services are pre-employment transition services that are focused on helping students with disabilities develop job skills and explore what kind of jobs um, are available in their community, explore jobs that they may be interested in, and also so um, offer some training or, or work experience opportunities. So there are a total of five DOR student services, um, and they are job exploration counseling, uh, work-based learning experiences, post-secondary enrollment counseling, work readiness training, and self-advocacy training. Um, the, D, the DOR student services are available to students with disabilities, meaning that um, it is a student who, who is between the ages of 16 through 21 years of age, um, all the way through the end of their 21st birthday, meaning right the day before they turn 22. Um, they are enrolled in a recognized education program that includes homeschooling, um, an alternative high school program, and then also that the student student has an IEP 504 or um, a, dis a disability. Um, so DOR student services, the focus of these, the five DOR student services is that is to um, help individuals prepare, students with disabilities, prepare for and learn job skills. So them, so some of the examples is uh, through the services is to help, an, in, help a student with a disability develop the skills that they need or, um, and uh, the knowledge that they need to know to get ready for competitive integrated employment. Um, uh, there's job training services, uh, teaching them the, how to search for a job, um, what skills are needed to get a job, um, interviewing skills, or what we call mock interviewing. Um, there, is, there are work experiences that are available. Um, we have different programs and partnerships available through other, um, uh, with, with other agencies where we can partner and help you find a work experience. Um, and let's see. So the next, um, the next service that I want to speak to, um, but also um, it, it, this is a, 
a resource that's available to you in the in that's available in the community. And this is the America's Job Centers of California, formerly known as uh, the Career One Stops, um, or what we now call them uh, as the AJCCs. So the America's Job Centers are um, designed to provide a full range of assistance to uh, job seekers um, in one in in one area. That's the reason why they called it the Career One Stop Center because services there they offer so many services that it's available in one stop. Um, so the off the centers offer training referrals, job um, listings, or what they or job advertisements. Um, they offer short term training such as computer training, typing training, um, also some um, short term work experience. Um, they to help they they offer develop. Um, services to help you develop a resume, classes to help individuals with their interviewing skills, um, and uh, so that way you can present yourself professionally to employers. So very similar to what um, Department of Rehab's DOR student services and the TPP programs can offer, this is just another resource that's available um, to you out in your community. So this is um, th the steps on how to find um, and, and navigate through the Career One Stop or AJCC website. And these are the steps that you could follow in order to find the one that's closest to you. What I really like about this when I went through this process is here in step number four, if you follow it all the way through, there is um, a list of um, one-stop centers that have uh, specifically youth services. Um, and once you click on the youth services um, section on the website, it will give you the contact number of the individual who provides and can help you get connected with youth services that are offered um, by the America's Job Centers or AJCCs. All right. Um, and with that said, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Carly Shearer. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Kami. Um, I am Carly Shearer. I'm the Client Employment Specialist with Alta California Regional Center. So your regional centers uh, are funded by Department of Developmental Services to uh, work with you, the client, and your family to find services and in uh, this situation, find services to learn job skills and obtain a job. So uh, typically the first step, you know, when you decide that you are ready for employment, your service court, your regional center service coordinator is going to refer you to DOR. That is because DOR is a generic resource, which um, in the, you know, essentially means that DOR is a uh, state funded resource that is legally responsible to provide funding to you or provide services to you. So if, you know, you go so typically you would go get a referral to DOR to do a, a you know, situational assessment to see um, you know, what, what supports you need in getting a CIE. And if for whatever reason, you know, DOR services have been exhausted or it's determined that DOR is not a good fit for you, that's when um, the regional center would then fund for services for you. And these may be support employment services, tailored day services, or a, a paid internship program. So the paid internship program is a great way to get job experience. Um, you work as an intern and um, ideally, uh, the, ideally you would uh, get hired on after the internship is over. That's not always the case, but that is always the goal. Um, but at the very least, we hope that you learn some great skills at the internship that, you know, will translate into future competitive employment. Um, for example, if you wanted to work as an office assistant, um, then a job coach would, uh, would help you get ready for work at that job and then help you find or get you ready to, you know, get work on the skills and get you ready to work at as an office assistant and then help you find a job where you can try it out. 
Um, you will get paid minimum wage or more. That is a requirement of a paid internship program, as well as um, another requirement is that it is integrated. Meaning not in, you know, a sheltered workshop, meaning you're not working by yourself without any other employees, it, it must be integrated. Additionally, um, you will notice that in the uh, CIE roadmap, it states that there is a maximum amount that you can make a year, and that maximum amount was $10,400. Uh, since the CIE roadmap was uh, released, that has been changed. There is no longer a maximum amount of money that you can make a year. Instead, there is a maximum amount of hours that you can work per year. Uh, that amount is 1,040 hours, and um, you do not have you can work multiple uh, different internships throughout the year. So say you started a um, paid internship on, you know, today, May 19th, and it only went for six months and you only used half of that, um, those 1,040 hours, you could start another paid internship um, you would, and you would only be able to use half of those hours. However, next year, um, on May 19th, those hours would restart. So you would be able, you would have another 1,040 hours to use, but there is no maximum amount of money that you can make. You can make minimum wage or you can make $30 an hour. There, there is no maximum. Um, there is a live link here, Kami, if you wanna click on that to take them to a web page with more information. I'm clicking it and I just need to move. Um, let me see here. Um, and then while you are doing that, uh, the you are paid through the paid internship program, you are paid through DDS funds, Department of Developmental Service funds. Um, there are several ways for the money to get to you. Um, but essentially um, it is at no cost to the employer. If, if, if the employer is the one who is paying you, they will be reimbursed. So for the duration of your internship, uh, you, your, fun, your wages are paid by the Department of Developmental Services. Um, and this is the guidelines for the implementation of paid internship program. Um, um, just the um, you know, welfare and institutions code and how you know, what the goals are and, you know, all that wonderful, you know, legal legislation uh, talk. Um, so if you want to um, review this, this is linked in the CIE roadmap. All right, and if you wanna to go to the next slide. All right. Um, Another option is support employment services. Um, this would be finding a job, not an internship, a regular job in the community. And you would receive a job coach um, for you know, a, amount of hours that would be determined with you and your planning team um, that teaches you skills and you know, to get ready for the job. And when you find a job, they would be on, they would help you um, do the job, whether it be on site with you or um, off-site. Um, not everyone feels, you know, that they, they need a job coach on-site with them and they just want support off-site. Um, others like to have the job coach on-site with them. Um, so it's just about uh, what you need and what, what makes you feel comfortable and what supports you feel that you need to be successful. Um, finally, there's tailored day service. Um, tailored day service serves um, uh, three primary goals. Um, it helps with post-secondary education. Um, it helps with job training, but not job development. Um, they they will, would just assist with preparing for a job, um, you know, working on the skills, determining what your goals are and whatnot. And then finally, uh, volunteerism. Um, there is technically, there is a fourth one. It would um, typically be you know, just independence, it's, um, you know, increasing independence in the community and inclusion in the community, but, um, you know, it may be something such as mobility training, but that um, is typically tied to one of those three, post-secondary education, job training, and volunteerism. 
Um, so if you are not looking necessarily for job development, um, you know, finding a job, but you just want, um, a, you know, a few hours a month to work with someone on, you know, some job skills, TDS may be something that you're interested in. Um, another thing is TDS hours are typically very limited. So um, it's good to go into TDS with, you know, a very structured goal in mind to get the most out of it. All right, next slide, please. Thank you. All right, Workability 2. Um, Workability 2 is a program. It's, you know, the successor of Workability 1 that serves um, high school students. This would serve um, a program that some adult schools have. Um, so DOR works with these adult schools offering Workability 2 support services. Um, if you, it would provide more, again, more job placement, more job training, but um, more focused on, you know, career planning. You know, it may be person-centered job placement, um, career assessments. Again, you know, res the same resume writing and, um, you know, job preparation, application preparation. Um, so there, there are some similarities to Workability One, but it's more, um, I would say, career focused and it's, you know, for that, you know, next level after Workability One. So this is another one that you can, um, work with, you know, your DOR or um, to see if they, you know, work with them or um, if you're at an adult school, you can see if they offer it. All right. Um, and then Cami, um, sorry, I got my, I got my slides mixed up. <laughs> That's okay, Carly. Okay. Um, I believe you're still going. Okay, over that's what it I thought. Still. Um, okay, that's what I thought. Um, okay, so um, and we're on the third one, correct? Um, so for this slide, we are going to be focusing um, on the next three slides. Yeah, uh, sorry, right. the next three roadmaps. And the reason being is because the next three, the next several slides could are services that are available to the next three populations. Yeah. So, That's right. Mm -hmm. so, since so many of them overlap, it, it got a little confusing for me. <laughs> All right. Yes. Yeah, so um, you know, a lot of in the CIE roadmaps, you'll find that a lot of the slides are the same. They're very similar based on um, which ones you go to. So um, we're going to be focusing on the next three um, tabs. Cami, if you want to go to the next slide. All right, so this slide will look very familiar. Tell your family or advocate, job coach, regional central center service coordinator, IPP team you are interested in CIE. So this will be very similar to the last slide where it was talking about your IEP team, except in this case, it's gonna be your IPP team. If you feel that you are ready for community integrated employment, you're ready to work, you're gonna you're gonna talk to your support team. Um, it may be um, a family member, a friend, an advocate, a job coach that you're already working with, um, and then definitely your regional center service coordinator because they're gonna be the ones who help put these services into place. So, um, again, if you did not finish high school. Um, should you work towards a high school diploma or a certificate of completion? That's, you know, if, if you're in the 18 to 21 range, um, you know, you've probably already gotten your diploma or are currently working on a certificate of completion. Um, if you finished high school, would you like to continue, continue your education by going to an adult school and then find a job or just working on getting a job. That's again, you know, something to think about what your goals are, um, you know, what skills you wanna build uh, and then what kind of jobs would you like? What skills do you already have? And what, you know, what types of career pathways interest you? What skills do you already have and what job skills do you need um, to obtain for the jobs that you are interested in? Um, your individual 
program plan, your IPP team, which again includes um, yourself, always your service coordinator, um, and then anyone else in your life that you want involved. It, it, there may not be anyone else in your life that you want involved, and it can just be you and the service coordinator, or it can, you know, be a whole whole mess of people. However, you you know, whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, but they can work with you if you decide that you're interested in CIE and this determine um, the best route for you. Next slide, please. Uh, your IPP team can help you decide um, whether you want a high school diploma or certificate of completion, um, if it's time to find CIE or if it is time to start preparing to get CIE in the future, depending on what your goals are. Um, maybe it, it's, you know, the right move is to further your education. Um, you know, someone in the chat said that they want to be a zoo zookeeper. So um, maybe, you know, it might be worthwhile to go and you know go back go back to school and work on your education to meet that goal because that's a goal that's you're going to need more education or you know in the health care field um you you're going to need more education or if you want to start getting experience in those fields maybe you want to um, get experience and get a job in one of those fields uh, po possibly a pip that leads to cie or something so that's, you know, it's going to be different for everyone, and that's something to discuss with your IPP team. Um, if you finished high school and do not want to, or do not want to finish high school, would you like to go to an adult school for job training skills or apply for DOR services or receive support employment services from your regional center to prepare for and get CIE? Um, there are, um, as stated here, a multitude of ways to prepare for CIE and to go about getting CIE. So again, that's something to discuss with your IPP team to decide what's the best avenue for you. Uh, your IPP team and you can discuss what kind of jobs you like, what job skills you already have and what job skills you need. Um, and again, Sid mentioned your soft skills, you know, think, of, think about, you know, are, do you like being around people or, you know, are you very social? Are you very organized? Um, do you have good customer service skills, you know, things like that, that, you know, aren't necessarily hard job skills um, that could translate well um, into CIE. Um, what goals do you want to work on to gain CIE in the future? Um, what services you will need to reach your goals? Services could include, um, you know, TDS. Services could include support employment. Uh, services could include um, a DOR referral. Where can you find the support you need to get CIE? Um, and this support could come from several generic resources, Department of Rehabilitation, America's Job Center of California, and uh, Regional Center. All right, um, and I think now that sums up my portion of it. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong. Call me. Actually, Carly, I'll go over this slide and I'll hand it back to you for the next <laughs> two slides. <laughs> okay. okay. Thank you. Um, so now what we're going to do is transition. Um, for the next several slides after this one, um, we're going to focus on services and programs uh, that are specifically tailored to the last group, which is um, those that are in college or a university. They do not have a job and are working um, and are working, but is not CIE. Or if you wish to look for are not working and you want to work towards CIE. So the next two slides, I'm going to hand it over to Carly and then I will go over. Uh, I will um, I will um, present as well. All right, so tell your family advocate and education counselor regional center or IPP team that you are interested in CIE. Um, again, very similar to uh, to the last several. Um, this time, um, if you're in higher education, uh, your education counselor might be involved. And I'm not going to go over all of this, um, repeat all of it again. Um, this one is different. What courses can you take in your college or university that will help you learn more about the job that you want? 
Um, you know, if you're interested in um, business, if you're interested in, um, you know, a micro enterprise, maybe um, not necessarily CIE, but if you're interested in micro enterprise, maybe taking some business courses in college would be very useful. You know, so you can talk with your IPP team, especially your education counselor about this particular one, about um, how, how your education um, and courses can help you with your goal. Um, and again, always, you know, include your service coordinator. They, they're the ones that can assist you in um, um, provide, getting these, you know, connecting you with these services. Uh, your IPP team can decide, um, you know, again, if it's time to find CAE, um, you know, what, when it's time to start preparing for CAE, uh, what kind of jobs you like or what kind of jobs you want, um, what goals you want to work on. And so here, this one's a little bit different too. Um, when you're in college, for university, where can you find the support you need to get CIE? Um, this support should, could come from, again, Department of Reha Rehabilitation, America's Job Center of California, or your regional center, but also College to Career, which Tasmin is going to talk a, a bit more about. Um, and then Workability 3 if you are in college, and Workability 4 if you are in university. Okay, thank you, Carly. Um, great information to share with us. I know it's a lot um, to take in as well. We will have this PowerPoint available for distribution as well, along with the recording. So um, thank you everyone for hanging in there. Uh, we're almost done and we are, I'm gonna go over um, in, brief, in brief what college to career is and Tasneem will speak to her program. Specifically, um, I'll go over what Workability 3 is and what Workability 4 is. So, um, so Workability 3 and 4 is very similar to the TPP program, the Transition Partnership Program, and the Workability 2 program. TPP is focused on, the, um, on providing employment services and um, employment preparation services to high school students, whereas Workability 2 is focused on individuals who are participating and in an adult uh, in, an, in an adult transition program. And then we have Workability 3 and Workability 4. So Workability 3 is a program that is focused on helping individuals who are in community colleges prepare for employment. Um, very similar services that they offer to the TPP program um, and Workability 2 in that the focus is helping individuals with disabilities prepare for employment. So some of the services that they offer could be helping the individual assess what kind of job do I want? What environment do I want to work in? Um, the, what career do I want to pursue? Um, they, some pro Workability 3 programs offer internships, job preparation services such as um, mock interviewing, helping them develop a resume that now speaks not only to their, um, their employment basic employment skills, but also more advanced skills that they've gained through their training at the community college, um, maybe some work experiences that they've had during their participation in um, a training program at the community college, and then also uh, listing um, their degrees that they, or the degree that they gained from um, their completion at the community college. And they also offer job placement services, connecting individuals with um, employers, helping individuals um, with disabilities search for work, um, learning where to search for work uh, on different online um, search engines. And because we connect with, um, we have a, we at the Department of Rehabilitation have um, a partnership 
partnership with the Workability 3 program and also Workability 4 program that we can combine our resources together and help individuals get connected with, with employers whom we have made a, a uh, established a relationship with or local um, businesses whom that we've um, established relationships with um, in our efforts to open up opportunities employment opportunities for people with disabilities. So I spoke a lot about the Workability 3 program, but the Workability 4 program is very similar um, and offer, offers very similar services to students with disabilities, but now their focus is on the population of students who are at a university uh, level. Okay, so what I had just mentioned is that in, in, in summary, um, just as a recap, again, uh, some of the services that they do offer uh, at the Workability 4 program is the uh, vocational assessment, internships, job preparation, job development, and then also short-term supports. So some um, Workability 4 programs offer short-term supports, formerly known as job coaching services. Um, not all Workability 3 and Workability 4 programs offer the exact same services, um, so it's important to check in with your college and inquire what services uh, to, does your Workability 3 program offer, but you can also get connected with the Department of Rehabilitation and they can also get you connected with the services you need in order to um, prepare for work and secure the, um, secure the job. So um, college to career is another college um, um, program that is available to students uh, with disabilities. Um, college to career programs are focused on helping students with uh, sorry, intellectual and developmental disabilities um, prepare for work. And so there are some very specific services um, such as academic uh, support services that the C2C program staff can offer and Tasneem can speak to that um, a little bit more in her presentation, um, help individuals get connected with volunteer paid or paid internships, um, get help individuals with um, students with disabilities also um, get connected with employers out in the community and also search, learn how to search for work and so forth. So I'm gonna go ahead and hand it over to Tasneem. Um, and before I do actually I wanted to share with you that the college to career programs are not available at every single community college or community college district. And here on this slide at the bottom, you could see that there uh, the college to career programs are available at the different colleges here listed. Um, one of them that's in the in, in the Northern Sierra District is uh, Shasta Community College District and also um, the Los Rios Community College District. District. So I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Tasneem Saw to speak about her program, the College to Career Program at Los Rios Community College District. Thanks, Kami. Um, so the like Kami said, there's eight College to Careers in California, and we're all pretty spread apart. So the one here at Sac City College is the one that I coordinate and I'm a counselor for. Um, and we do serve students with intellectual disabilities and uh, on a case by case basis. Can you hear me? I think I got muted somehow. Yes. Okay. Did you guys hear the first part of what I just said? I don't I, we heard the first 10 seconds. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. Because uh, I just got a message saying host muted me. So, um, so we do serve students um, and individuals who have an intellectual disability and on a case by case basis, those with who are on the spectrum, uh, if they can benefit from the services of the program. Uh, we support and provide services to students who are interested in going to college and getting a foundation in some kind of education field that has to do with their employment goal. Um, <laughs> excuse me. 
And so we want to make sure we're assisting with skill building that leads towards, you know, work experience and integrated employment by the end of it with decreased support um, and be as independent as possible working out in the community. Next slide, please. So as Kami mentioned, and it was written in one of the first slides, these are our C2C programs. As you can tell, the dark green ones were the first five pilot programs that started in 2011. And then the lighter green ones um, got added, the three new ones got added uh, later on in 2017, I think it was. Uh, but we all are still operating and as you can tell, very widespread, uh, but we have two neighbors right now. Next slide, please. Um, we are housed at Sacramento City College within the Disability Services Program. Um, and um, we are considered a full inclusive program, which means that a student is to choose a certificate or a field or major from the catalog for Sac City College. Um, so students are attending classes and attending school uh, with everybody else in an integrated setting. The only certificate that is C2C specific right now is the customer service certificate. Um, and each year, uh, we're only limited to take 20 students a year, up to 20 students a year. And so, Usually acceptance to the program is by referral and then we do information meeting and then a, a screening interview and we go from there to see if the individual would benefit from the program and whether they're interested in going to college and ultimately getting a job. So the eligibility criteria to be in the program is that they be 18 or over have a documented diagnosis of intellectual disability and be a client of Department of Rehabilitation. Um, so some of the criteria to be in the program is that students be able to understand and interact with college level material independently and be able to attend classes, participate, ask questions, learn how to be a successful student. So a lot of the how to's that we actually learn slowly in our lives, uh, we want students to be able to learn those skills in order to be a successful college student so that they can kind of gain everything that they can from the college experience able to, you know, basically be a student, you know, uh, ask appropriate questions, follow directions in class, do their homework, study for tests, uh, use all the resources on campus that we offer, use all your accommodations that um, disability services might offer as well, and be able to benefit from all those resources to be, to get that college experience. And then ultimately, the, the end goal is to, you know, obtain that paid uh, employment. So, some of the expectations for C2C students is the, what you see on the screen is for all regular students, um, you know, that we want you to be able to commit spending some time being a college student, which would include attending classes, you know, doing your homework, you might have times when you might have to meet with other students for study groups, meeting with your teachers during office hours and accessing all the support services our campus offers, like tutoring and counseling, financial aid workshops, other workshops uh, on our campus, college to career workshops. We want you to be as involved as possible on the campus. And then you have your mandatory meetings twice a week with your education coach, uh, which you get assigned, an individual gets assigned once you accept into the program. Um, referrals are made in different ways. The referrals can come from your department of rehab counselor, from your ultra regional service coordinator, from a DSPS counselor, special ed teachers, word of mouth. A lot of parents kind of call and say, my, you know, my friend's son attended Sac City College C2C and I'm really interested. My son or daughter is graduating this May or June. So as you can tell, I get referrals from everywhere, um, from high schools from, to all the agencies that I partner with as well. And one thing I wanted to mention about referrals is sometimes I get the question, how do we refer? The easiest way to refer a student is to email me first. So whether you're introducing me to the individual or you're just emailing me and saying, hey, I think I have a student who I think would be really appropriate for your program. Um, can we schedule a time to meet? I will then schedule a one-on-one -on -one meeting with the, the individual, their support team, you, 
for an information meeting so I can share all about C2C and what to expect and the goals of the program. And that's kind of the best ways. Email is the best way to reach me right now. Um, we're working on a referral form, but for right now, this is actually the best way since we're still working partially remotely. So, but if there's any questions, my work phone number's right there and my email is right there as well. Awesome. Thank you so much, Tasneem. Um, and so what I, I, oops, can you guys, there we go. Um, next up is uh, Herman Kothi to take, uh, to wrap it up for us. Thank you, Kami. <clears throat> um, one of the reasons uh, that State Council and the Regional Centers and Department of Rehab uh, partnered in this project about uh, work services is because of some pretty significant changes in the law that are gonna impact uh, options and available services for uh, clients uh, with developmental disabilities. So Senate Bill uh, 639, which was authored by Assemblyperson uh, Durazo, uh, was actually signed into law, uh, passed by uh, Governor Newsom. And what that law ultimately does uh, is make it illegal for new programs to be developed uh, that would pay sub-minimum wage. And those used to be some pretty popular options as a starting point for individuals with developmental disabilities to get their foot in the door and learn some work skills. Uh, they were called uh, work activity programs, uh, sometimes referred to as sheltered workshops because the person would go to a a physical site, a location uh, that served only individuals with developmental disabilities, and people would get paid based on their productivity. And uh, if their productivity was below what would be ordinarily expected, uh, they would receive sub-minimum wage, less than minimum wage. Uh, this landmark legislation that was signed into law uh, made that illegal uh, to open up new programs that would run uh, facilities like that uh, at the beginning of this year, January 1st, 2022. There are still some programs that continue to operate and uh, support people in learning job skills, providing them training, uh, but pay them less than minimum wage. And those programs are no longer going to be uh, able to do that after January 1st of 2025. Uh, again, that's what this law um, requires, uh, that after January 1st of 2025, uh, no one will continue to be paid uh, less than minimum wage. And minimum wage in California is currently uh, $15 an hour for uh, companies, uh, large companies with employees of uh, 26 or more. Uh, smaller companies uh, with 26 or less employees can pay uh, $14 an hour. Uh, I just did a little bit of research online and discovered that uh, minimum wage will be going up uh, with a inflation trigger in the state of California uh, at the beginning of next year, January 1st, 2023. It looks like minimum wage is going to be increased to $15.50 an hour and that's regardless of the size of the employer. I do wanna point out, uh, if we could go back one slide, sorry. Um, there are uh, on this slide, because uh, the slide deck will be shared with people, uh, some hyperlinks. Uh, if you hover your mouse above where it says Senate Bill 639, Kami, and you don't need to click on it to navigate, I'll drop a, a link in the chat to everyone. Uh, it takes you to the actual legislation. And at the bottom of the page where it says SB 639 and SCDD, uh, which is the State Council on Developmental Disabilities, uh, that link navigates you to our partner uh, in the State Council of Developmental Disabilities page that focuses on this important legislation and the plan to transition folks uh, from those uh, settings. And I can drop a link uh, to that directly in the chat as well. Uh, so you don't have to wait for the slide deck to arrive. Uh, now we can go to the next slide, um, which essentially uh, just covers exactly what I said about uh, what that law does. And the slide says it's a bill, but uh, it's a bill until uh, it's passed by the legislation and signed into law by the governor, which it has. Uh, so that is now a law that can be found in 
the California Labor Code, uh, Section 1191. Uh, and again, it's going to make subminimum wage uh, settings uh, illegal effective January 1st, 2025. So uh, if that was some place that you had envisioned and had in mind as your plan for uh, what you were going to start doing after you exited uh, the education system, uh, we probably need to be looking at uh, other options like the ones that Carly described. Next slide, please. Uh, lastly, we'll just uh, point out uh, our contact information is included in the slide decks that will be shared. And we have our email contacts for the representatives of the regional center, Carly and myself, uh, as well as our phone numbers. Our counterpart at Far Northern Regional Center was unable to join us today, but uh, she's available for contact as well for clients of uh, that regional center's catchment area. Uh, next slide, please. And we'll also include some contact information for Kami from Department of Rehabilitation. And uh, we, we didn't get a chance to update this, but Sarah May with State Council has retired, is no longer with State Council, but uh, Peter, who you met earlier in this presentation, uh, is available and his contact information and phone number are listed on that slide as well. Um, so that's uh, the conclusion of today's presentation. Uh, we hope you'll be able to come back and join us in June. Again, we're meeting uh, on, where are we? The third Thursday of every month. So our June uh, meeting will fall on uh, June 16th. We'll be back at four o'clock and we'll be focusing on the slightly older age group, uh, individuals ages 22 to 64 oh, and what employment might services might look like for them. So we're at the 515 mark. Uh, we would okay. like to open it up for any quick questions. Um, I don't know that I saw uh, too many questions in chat that didn't get responded to. Herman, this is Peter. I want to thank you and all the presenters. We're also going to launch a, a quick poll if folks could fill it out. I'm launching it right now. The first question is, are you satisfied with this activity? The second question is, did you learn more about the competitive innovative roadmap? I'll say the second question again. Did you learn more about the competitive innovative roadmap? And it looks like everyone uh, participated and everyone really enjoyed the presentation. So I'm gonna go ahead. Uh, can someone, my vision isn't the best tonight. Can you confirm that every that everyone's um, had a chance to complete it? The print's a little small for me. Someone can do that. We have 15 out of uh, 15 responses, but I think we have 30 participants, which includes uh, the panel as well. Okay, so we'll leave it up for just a second. Just a few more. Thank you. And as we wait, all the uh, questions um, in the chat were addressed during the presentation. Uh, there are a couple of requests for materials from uh, prior presentations, and I'll email you that information, Peter. No problem. Just so everyone knows, everyone who registered will receive a copy of this presentation. And again, if you let us know, we'll be glad to uh, email out the previous presentations as well. I also wanted to honor the presenters tonight who did a great job. Herman Coe with Alta California Regional Center, Sid Van Corsel also with Alta California Regional Center, and Carly Scherer with Alta California Regional Center, and Cami Zampanta uh, with the Department of Rehabilitation, and um, Tasneem Shah, who's well, also with, who's with the Sacramento City College. We really appreciate the presentation tonight. I did want to also honor the interpreters as well. 
And they are. Um, Liz and Candace and our captioner, Jonah. Or sorry, Joanna. My apologies. You know, it's really important that we honor the people who support us. So, And we really appreciate everyone participating tonight. With that, I think we'll, oh, I see a question in the chat. Laurel Peterson would like a copy of not just this presentation, but the prior presentations. Uh, Laurel, are you able to put in your email address uh, in the chat? I'm collecting the email addresses. I know we have your registration, but I wanna make sure to flag your request. Thank you. I also see Lulu Chong's hand up. Lulu, do you want to unmute yourself? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, hi. I can. hi. Hi, thank you so much for the presentation and the workshop. I think it's tremendously helpful. Um, I have a 16 year old and we are thinking about um, um, starting the connecting with the DOR. Um, but I was told during an IEP meeting that um, we can't really reach out to DOR until she's 18. Um, so I feel like she's kind of stuck right now in between. Um, and I'm wondering if there's any um, suggestion that um, you could recommend for us. Thank you. I could answer that, yeah. Um, so the Department of Rehabilitation offers DOR student services in which uh, the DOR student services are those five services that I mentioned earlier. Um, and that is available to uh, students with disabilities ages eight, 16 through uh, 21 years of age. And so um, if you're if your child is interested in any of the five DOR student services um, and um, meets that eligibility criteria, so the three eligibility criteria being that the student is 16 through 21 years of age, has a disability, um, and also um, is enrolled in, in an educational program, um, such as high school, in-home, um, schooling and also um, some an alternative uh, high school program, you can reach out to your local DOR office and request um, uh, uh, submit help your child submit a DOR student services request form. I'm going to drop my contact information in the chat, Lulu, so you can reach out to me directly and I can help you get connected to your local D uh, DOR student services team. Okay, that would be that would be great. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your question. All right, Peter, I'm going to hand it off to you. Um, it doesn't look like we have any more questions in the chat. Um, so. I think this we've reached the end of our presentation and we want to thank everyone for joining us this uh, evening and this afternoon. And we hope to see you at the next presentation um, or on June 16th, now focusing on um, the age range of 22 to 64. Thank you, Kevin. And thank you all so much for coming. You know, uh, we really value our presenters and as a support, but also this event wouldn't be possible without you, those who joined us today. So thank you so much. We look forward to seeing you at our next um, presentation. Have a great evening. Stay safe. Remember, it's uh, really hot in the Sacramento region. And many areas around this, same. drink plenty of water and take care of yourselves. Be good to one another. Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening. Have a good evening, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening.